All right, so here's a fun one. Lizzo! Everyone has been wondering how Lizzo would react to the recent South Park episode, The End of Obesity, where they take on the latest uh, craze with weight loss drugs. Um, so we will see that video, but first let's sum up the episode a bit. We both saw it, so we'll review it a little. Okay, so Cartman finds out that he can actually lose weight with these weight loss drugs. And of course, his fantasy of what that would be like <laughs> yeah. would be becoming thin, insulting people to their face, and them not having a comeback because he's not fat anymore. <laughs> right. This great. is why he wants to lose weight. He actually a running gag is he keeps going to Pakistan and giving speeches where he insults Pakistanis yeah. and they can't say anything back to him. His best um, life fantasy is that he can bully people with impunity, which yeah. actually, I mean, I thought that I, I thought they were sharing a subtle insight on a lot of the narcissistic personalities that are most attracted to ideological kind of um, right fact studies and critical studies um so because they do not ensure ozempic unless you have diabetes weight loss isn't as what what they call an off-label use um he gets prescribed lizzo um which is body positivity so a running kind of class theme in this is the rich get lizzo which costs about 1200 uh, the rich ghetto zempic which costs about 1200 a month for real i looked it up um and the pores get lizzo they get the pores get body positivity um so they decide to go explore through the american healthcare system because obesity is a disease which as they point out and i'll drop a slide about this oprah says it's a disease so it should be covered by insurance so the guy who approves claims you can see is sitting there with a dial-up phone and a uh dot matrix printer and uh just to, just a sad bureaucrat whose job is yeah. basically to turn down claims for money um so all the in the b plot all the women in South Park, all the moms are becoming MILFs because they're all shooting up Ozempic to get these flat stomachs and they're all wearing crop tops. Uh, so Randy gets invited to a drug party because it's hard to get the drugs. So they start like a uh, what you had with uh, with AIDS drugs. Basically, right, like they exchange. start a club yeah. Yeah. to get the drugs. He thinks they're talking about real drugs when he gets invited. And they hand him Ozempic, and there's a kind of funny satire of those 60s drug movies where the person gets turned on to drugs for the first time at the commune. Um, okay, so because Cartman cannot get these drugs, uh, the boys decide to start a compound pharmacy where they get the active ingredient shipped from a factory in India and uh, make their own doses. Um, now the food industry and the sugar industry hadn't minded the availability of these drugs as long as it was limited to the rich, but in what I thought was probably the funniest gag aside from the Lizzo gag, um, the mascots of all of these sugary cereals and snacks form a cartel and decide to whack them for, for making these drugs available. I thought what probably the best insight in the episode, and I'll show you why later, um, is the mascots do these terrorist acts against the India factory and represent themselves as fat activists um, who are yeah. arguing for body positivity. And that is very much reality, as we will see. So I, I thought that was really funny. Um, OK, so friend of show Lizzo um released a reaction video to this where she watched the lizzo sequence in real time uh so uh, it, whose mom is that stan's mom is that stan's mom stan's mom and uh kyle's mom uh, and that's kyle's mom but stan's mom so she stan's goes on mom, the drug yeah she decide. well she decides to go on lizzo right, right right um so there's a whole sequence where uh they do an ad for lizzo which lizzo live reacted to on instagram as my worst fear has been actualized, I've been referenced in a South Park episode. I'm so scared. I'm going to blind duet to it right now. Here we go. I'm telling you 
you, Sheila, these new drugs, I controlled all my cravings to be thinner with Lizzo. Uh, I've lowered my standards and my expectations. 70% of patients on Lizzo no longer care how much they weigh. I don't give two shits. You eat everything you want and keep physical activity to a minimum. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis, hypothermia, and the fucking and album! Out your ears. That's crazy. I just feel like, damn, I'm really that bitch. I'm really that bitch. I really showed the world how to love yourself and not give a fuck to the point where these men in Colorado know who the fuck I am and put it on their cartoon that's been around for 25 years. I'm really that bitch and I'll show y'all how to not give a fuck and I'm gonna keep on showing you how to not give a fuck. Oh, 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 Lizzo, bitch. Okay. So what did they get? Uh, so we don't want to spoil spoil the ending, but no, but can I just react very quickly to that? Yes, please. Because yeah, this is billed as a brutal takedown, and you know the media likes to sensationalize, you know, in the in the sort of clickbaity kind of space. It was a brutal takedown. This episode of South Park is probably oops, I'm sorry, probably the tamest and most PC thing South Park has ever done. Like the irony is, this was the mildest, most genteel politically correct episode of South Park ever. When you hear Lizzo's going to get a brutal takedown on South Park, what I'm thinking is, you know, when Isaac Hayes quit the show because they did the Scientology right. episode, they right. gave the right. chef this very undignified death, and then the Sally Struthers, they portrayed her as a job of a hut type. Right. That's what right. I thought. I was waiting for Lizzo to appear as this big, you know, I was thinking they're going to do something really over well, the top, well, not, and they didn't, well, because well, not, not only, only that, is you're the... You're, well, go ahead. you're talking about somebody who has been accused of sexual and psychological abuse right. of her employees, and you're going to do a Lizzo thing and you don't touch that? They didn't touch any of that. They they really kept it on this sort of class analysis. And um, not only was the presentation very PC, and this is very South Park, the, the message ended up being very much anti-fat shaming. Like they, they really – the conclusion at the end – is that yes, people are kept unhealthy by sugary cereals and by the, you know, for profit healthcare system. So like this episode was was really, I mean, it was the libbiest episode of South Park I can think of. It, it was not edgy, it was not over the top, it was not gratuitous at all. It was actually quite tame and decently funny. I thought it was okay. It was not one of their best, but not bad. Yeah, I thought the best gag because it was it was true. It was hitting on something real were the mascots being the sugar cartel right, right, that are right. pushing fat acceptance for profit, right, right, as right. we'll see. So I thought that was what they hit on best, but they missed a lot of things. I don't know if it's laziness. They didn't really do their research on certain elements of this. Yes, Lizzo, that was a very, that was the least you could have done. Yeah, with she got somebody. off easy, easy. On Very she, yeah. Here's somebody who's <laughs> yeah. been talking about everyone being oh, yeah. accepted, who it turns out is a fucking monster as soon right. as the cameras are off, and you're South Park. Yeah. And yeah. you don't. When South Park wants to go that. at you, they go at you. Yeah. They they well, treated her with kid gloves. Yeah. Right. And then the conclusion, while I agree, nobody should be fat shamed, and they also kind of touched on that the that the food supply is part of the problem. They also kind of accepted the formulation of not having any control. They didn't yeah, quite yeah. say it that way, but they kind of accepted that and presented this as a choice between people should be able to get these weight loss drugs or they're fed an empty fat acceptance, which really isn't good for them and the food is bad so you shouldn't shame them for being fat anyway which was a very muddled all over the place message and and really an uninformed one which is part of what i want to point out here um so let's take a look at what i think they got right and they got wrong yes it is not covered by insurance so this impression that this is available to everybody which i guess if you're somebody who is not interested in getting it. You just wouldn't know like me. Yeah, no, you can't get it unless you're diabetic. I mean, not through insurance, you can pay for it, right. but it's expensive. So yes, rich people can take Ozempic and the poors get body positivity. That's a, that's a funny formulation in and of itself. They just didn't go very much uh, deeper than that. 
Um, okay, so this is something else I felt like they didn't get into. And if anything, they kind of signed off on it. Why are you hearing all of a sudden this framing of obesity as a disease that you have no control over? Why are you hearing this narrative so much? And you know, when they need a money grub and whore to sell anything from Harvey Weinstein to Meghan Markle, you know who they go to. They go to Oprah. You know when Oprah's pushing it, somebody made a phone call. Hey, let's get Oprah. So why, why are Oprah and all these other influencers produce, uh, pushing the idea that it's a disease? Because the pharmaceutical companies are dying to get this defined as a disease because that's going to open up the insurance company floodgates. So you have a whole episode where they're dealing with the fact that the American healthcare system is fucked up and the insurance companies don't want to cover it. And they're not at all, which is really beneath South Park. That's what's so great about South Park at its best, that they will work all of these angles. Don't at all get into the fact that the pharmaceutical companies are pushing hard to define obesity as a disease so that insurance companies will be forced to cover their weight loss drugs. Right. That's why all of a sudden you're hearing this redefinition. Some people do have a medical condition, thyroid conditions, things like that, but they, they, this is beyond that. They're trying to define it like cancer, like diabetes. It, it is a disease in and of itself. And I got to tell you something so you understand I'm not like punching down or talking about something I don't know anything about. I never, I never struggled with my weight until I hit middle age, like a lot of people do. The first time I blew up, I lost the weight with a lot of hard work and diet. And then I kind of worked out too hard. I had to stop working out for over a year. And some of you might've noticed, especially if you saw me on Jimmy doors or it's more full torso, I blew up 30 pounds since I've been home from LA. I lost eight pounds. How did I do it? I didn't take a fucking weight loss drug diet and exercise diet and exercise. It's really not that fucking complicated. Um, now you want to say, well, it's not easy for everybody. Yeah. You know who it's not easy for 54 year old fucking people. Okay. So don't, don't tell me, oh, I can't do it because I have this or that. If you have an actual medical condition, sure, sure. And in terms of having a food addiction, yeah, I, I had a cigarette addiction. I never had a food addiction. I've never had a hard time putting down food so I can say, okay, I'm going to do this with my diet and I'm going to do this kind of exercise. I, I understand that. And having smoked for as long as I did, I'm not in a position to judge it, but being told you have no power over your situation, you have no power over your condition. They're telling you that because they want you to be dependent on their drugs for the rest of your fucking life. Because, okay, suppose you do get it covered by insurance. What happens when you stop taking these drugs? Now you're right, stuck. Of course, yeah. For the rest of your fucking life, you are going to be dependent on these pharmaceuticals. And we've never used these pharmaceuticals on a mass basis for this purpose before. You don't know what the long-term side effects of that are going to be. Nobody does. My, my general view is the less you have to be dependent on the pharmaceutical industry, the better. If you can address it holistically, you should. You can't with everything. But if you can address it without that, that is what you should do. And that's exactly what they don't want you to do. And that's why they're trying to tell you it's a disease that you're powerless to overcome. Again, 54 years old, eight pounds. Today's exactly four weeks since I got back from LA. Four weeks. Um, so also something they didn't get into. Popular weight loss drugs linked to rare but severe stomach problem study finds. GLP-1 medications work in part by slowing down how quickly food passes through the stomach, leading people to feel fuller longer. But they can also lead to gastrointestinal side effects, including abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting, as shown in clinical trials and noted on drug labels. More recently, as the drugs have skyrocketed in popularity, there have been reports of patients who develop stomach paralysis or gastroparesis. That, by the way, I believe, if I understood the article correctly, that's a permanent condition with severe 
impact on your quality of life. In August, Novo Nordisk was sued over claims that Ozempic caused a woman's stomach paralysis. Eli Lilly, which makes another GLP-1 drug, terzepatide, was also included in the lawsuit. So they didn't mention that. Like, if you just watch this episode, you would think there are no real consequences to this. In fact, Randy, who originally thought these were drug drugs, has a monologue with Towley where he talks about how this is a drug with no negative side effects. He actually has a monologue like that where he's like, yeah, and I feel great the next day and my dick still works. Yeah, dick works. Like, yeah. my, your dick works. He doesn't say anything about any side effects. So that was something else they missed. Now, this is what they really got right with the mascot gag. Um, as obesity rises, big food and dietitians push anti-diet advice. Now, this old, particularly the General Mills thing, that's real. I think they make Cocoa Puffs and they make Lucky Charms. One company in particular, General Mills, maker of Cocoa Puffs and Lucky Charms, yes, has launched a multi-pronged campaign that capitalizes on the teachings of the anti-diet movement. General Mills has toured the country touting anti-diet research it claims proves the harms of food shaming. It has showered giveaways on registered dietitians who promote its cereals online with the hashtag, hashtag derail the shame and sponsored influencers who promoted sugary snacks. The company has also enlisted a team of lobbyists and pushed back against federal policies that would add health information to food labels. So you see, none of this is an organic social movement or civil rights movement. This is this is purely social engineering being handed down by people who stand to profit from you being sick and obese. Here's another one, also Washington Post. They've done some good work on this, credit where credit is due. The food industry pays influencer dietitians to shape your eating habits. The food, beverage, and dietary supplement industries are paying dozens of registered dietitians that collectively have millions of social media followers to help sell products and deliver industry-friendly messages on Instagram and TikTok. The analysis of thousands of posts found that companies and industry groups paid dietitians for content that encouraged viewers to eat candy and ice cream downplayed the health risks of highly processed foods and pushed unproven supplements, messages that run counter to decades of scientific evidence about healthy eating. The review found that among 68 dietitians with 10,000 or more social media followers on TikTok or Instagram, about half had promoted food, beverages, or supplements to their combined 11 million followers within the last year. And the article goes on to say some of them they disclose that they're being paid, uh, but most of them do not. Um, so now when you see this, this is Tess Holiday. When you see this, you are meant, particularly women, are meant to associate it with this. They're meant to see this as an extension of women's rights and extension of feminist struggles. But what you should really be seeing when you see this is this. Edward Bernays was probably the first person to pull this trick on women to try to connect their desire for empowerment and liberation to a deeply unhealthy habit that will kill women. Uh, but he certainly was not the last, as we can see from this fat positivity body positivity movement. Faced with the challenge as an advertiser, he's for anyone who doesn't know, most of you will. We have we have very smart people. We have great people. Everybody's saying it. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, he's kind of the father of modern advertising um, and a really evil dude. So presented with the challenge of women, it was considered unladylike to smoke back then. So they did smoke, but they smoked indoors. So the cigarette companies presented him the challenge. We'd sell a lot more cigarettes if women smoked outdoors. So Bernays, in his satanic uh, disposition, came up with a scheme, uh, the Torches for Freedom March, where women, to show their liberation, would march smoking 
cigarettes. And that's where you get that. I mean, that goes all the way down to the Virginia Slims advertising campaigns of the 70s. You've come a long way, baby, and all that shit. Um, that is what body, body positivity is. Now, there is a healthy, hey, you shouldn't have to look like a stick to be attractive. That's an artificial standard. That That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about trying to tell you that that is fine. That is this. That is this. That is telling you that killing yourself is an expression of liberation and that it's only the patriarchy that's keeping you down. No, it's millions of years of evolution that dictate that that is not good for you. Um, so I thought South Park touched on that somewhat. But you're right. They could have done so much more with this. In a lot of ways, it was a disappointment. Well, they did do. I mean, they did even touch on the uh, like I said, it, it really it really was very much, you know, and this is good, uh, you know, an, an anti fat shaming special like Stan's mom starts grabbing at her stomach. Stan's mom is not even a big woman, but she right, sees right. the women with the right artificially right, 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 reduced they got the, the box stomach exactly yeah. so now it becomes you know it, it feeds people like hmm could i be even thinner if i because you know so she starts getting self-conscious you know for for no reason she had no medical reason to try and take a drug and instead she ends up on the the lizzo drug right, right um right. so yeah i mean they, they left a lot on the table it was 50 minutes and you know i mean look their first obligation is to tell a story and make people laugh so i guess maybe that explains some of it you know if you try to do too much uh you can you can lose sight of what your your actual goal is when you're doing one of these shows um so you know it was it was uh you know they, they kept it tight in that way and you know it was it was decently funny but i, I found the controversy surrounding the episode a symptom of the same sort of media right. culture like to to put videos on youtube you have to say you know uh you know south Liz, park, lizzo takedown. gets wrecked by yeah, south park is a wrecked by south park rizzo, yeah, did she, rizzo she didn't melts look very down. wrecked no yeah, she, she was fine wrecked. because she got i mean they they treated her with great courtesy compared to some of the other takedowns that i am done. sure when, when she when she saw that this was not going to be her forcing employees to take a uh, take a banana to the face shot right. out of a vagina she was very relieved exactly yeah yeah so definitely definitely she did all right please clap <laughs> 